guest is Dr. David Padgett from Tennessee State University, who's given us information relative to chocolate cities uh, in crisis and an analysis in terms of some of the problems that many of these uh, cities face. And of course, Dr. Padgett, let's continue our discussion. I think you were dealing with Atlanta before we uh, had our second commercial break. Let's continue there. Yeah, Atlanta is truly a tale of two cities. Uh, it's known as Black Mecca, uh, one of the major civil rights movement cities. Uh, and what really put Atlanta on the top of our list mm -hmm. for black enterprise was economic opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurship, and obviously Black Enterprise Magazine appeals mm -hmm. to those types of readers. And what set our survey apart mm -hmm. was that we actually had the readers mm -hmm. uh, respond and s tell what they thought, and then we mm -hmm. combined that with the statistical data. So one side of Atlanta is the wealthy, you know, the, the, the mm -hmm. Gwinnett County, which is just part of the metro area. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the other Atlanta, which leads the nation in crime, mm -hmm. uh, which has pockets of poverty, mm -hmm. uh, which has all kinds of inequity in terms of transit, public transit. Uh, and so it's, it's almost a, a, a two-faced city. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but yet, uh, Atlanta, again, mm -hmm. never fails. I mean, more people, more black people moved to Atlanta mm -hmm. uh, over the past 10 years, I think, than any other city in the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, African Americans have flocked mm -hmm. there by the hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. literally. Uh, and so as long as Atlanta is a place where pe black people see opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to go there. Mm -hmm. Is it going to spread throughout the entire black population? Mm -hmm. Well, that remains to be, to be seen. Now, Detroit, mm -hmm. the next city, it, next chocolate city is, is obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the home of Motown, uh, but it's also the city that when we teach urban studies, uh, it's always used as a model for urban decay. Mm -hmm. uh, Detroit has been bleeding people. People have been leaving Detroit in droves. Detroit fell below a million people mm. uh, during this past census for the first time in 50 years. Mm. I mean, it's literally people are getting out of Detroit. It's like rats off of a sinking ship. Mm. Uh, Detroit, with now with the automotive industry having its problems, mm. mm -hmm. uh, things are getting even worse in Detroit. And they're almost, in, they've got a young dynamic mayor there, Kwame mm. Kilpatrick, uh, and he's young and he's energetic and he's going to need to be energetic mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. that city has lots and lots of problems. Mm -hmm. And so, and I don't know, I mean, I, I'm almost speechless you're when it comes to Detroit. You're very pessimistic in yeah. terms of what now, now, Detroit, as I said, made the list the first year because mm -hmm. we weren't as scientific mm -hmm. uh, with the survey as we would have been in, in other years. Um, but Detroit, be performed poorly in almost all areas that we looked at. Mm -hmm. We looked at crime, uh, we looked at economic opportunity, even cost of living. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what category we, we looked at. One of the categories we look at also is um, quality of, of child care. Mm -hmm. uh, with 70% of our children uh, being raised in single parent households, mm -hmm. primarily women, mm -hmm. child care is an issue in our community. And if, if a city is not making some moves or, or, or making child care mm -hmm. readily available, good, and, and giving those opportunities for, to women, mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I think Detroit was one of those cities that performed very poorly mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, now, Birmingham mm -hmm. is a city that, that made, it, made the list in 2004, didn't make it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, purely due to lack of participation on the part of the respondents. We have to have a, a cutoff point for the minimum number of responses mm -hmm. to have a, a, a good sampling pool. Mm -hmm. um, but the people who, were in, who did respond, mm -hmm. responded very favorably for Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, and if you think of it, it's really unusual. I mean, Birmingham was once known as Bombingham. Yeah. It was once known as, mm -hmm. as you know, just this, this, at least the worst place, you, last place you want to be black in the mm -hmm. United States. Uh, almost was Birmingham if you were going to live in a city okay. uh, maybe 40 years ago and now it's this uh, it's, it seems to be more progressive uh, it's a heavily almost 75 percent black mm -hmm. city uh, it has its problems mm -hmm. uh, and I'd probably say of all these cities Birmingham is probably the least that's in crisis but mm -hmm. being in the south uh, being in this part of the country, they have issues going on there as far as health mm -hmm. uh, and economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, because this part of the country, we, we, we're in the heart attack corridor mm -hmm. or the coronary corridor. 
And so Birmingham falls into that category. Uh, you have, obviously, being in the South, there's a, we're lagging behind somewhat mm -hmm. in education. Uh, and so those, there are those challenges. But of, of, of all these cities, other than Atlanta, Birmingham uh, is a surprise mm -hmm. city, a pleasant surprise. But do they still have the crime there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do they still have problems there? Yes. Uh, but uh, it's the one city that, that, that might have some mm -hmm. answers to some of the problems that we are seeing in some of these other cities. You know, Dr. Patrick, when you uh, talk about all of these cities, it seems that uh, this kind of information ought to be uh, uh, made known to uh, those individuals who are talking about uh, a new era in terms of moving beyond where we are and opportunities and et cetera. And, uh, and I think Congress, uh, uh, we, ha we have a, 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 an election that's scheduled here. And, and all of these things, they ought to be, this ought to be good uh, material for those individuals who are talking about trying to improve the lives of individuals all across America. Now, I think we might be dealing with chocolate cities here. But there ought to be some kind of movement somewhere in Congress, uh, uh, somewhere with some kind of force that can deal with all of these problems. Because it seems that these are national problems, even though we talk about chocolate cities and et cetera. Uh, as the chocolate cities go, I would imagine as America would go, too. Would, 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 not, would not you say that? Yes, exactly. In fact, uh, in the nine years of doing this study, what I've found is there are three areas with which African Americans are the most dissatisfied. One is education, mm -hmm. two is quality of child care, and three is um, a, the relationship between African Americans and the police. Those mm -hmm. are the three poorest performing areas mm -hmm. on the survey, mm -hmm. uh, which is frightening when we're living in cities that have high crime rates, but yet we don't get good police service. Mm -hmm. uh, then the last two both have to do with our children, which are our future, child mm -hmm. care and education. Mm -hmm. uh, there has to be some, uh, a greater effort at improving education and throwing money at education is not the answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at who we produce mm -hmm. when we had nothing, when we mm -hmm. had no money uh, during the times mm -hmm. of segregation, when we mm -hmm. had uh, children in, in little schoolhouses in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. uh, and yet a lot of those people have PhDs, MDs, mm -hmm. JDs, uh, and now we're not producing at, at that level mm -hmm. when we had no money. And so uh, the number one factor in mm -hmm. determining the success or failure of a student is the investment, the, the emotional investment mm -hmm. uh, or in real investment that a teacher has in that classroom. Mm -hmm. And apparently that n must not be happening mm -hmm. today. I'm not going to say anything bad about teachers. Maybe mm -hmm. they're handicapped. Maybe they're in a position where mm -hmm. they can't. But, but I think where do our children spend the most time in these cities? Mm -hmm. At school. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's where they, they are the most of the time. And, and, and we've, we've, that's where our, that's where we lose our black males mm -hmm. is in school. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they go from school to special ed to prison. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the number one area that we have to, mm -hmm. to invest in. Number two, and I learned this again, was with child care. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any children, but, but people that I know who do say child care is extremely expensive mm -hmm. and then good child care. Mm -hmm. It's almost a double-edged sword. I, I, I want to work so I can make money, but, then I'm, but if I work, I can't be at home with my mm -hmm. kids, and then I spend all my money on child care. I don't have any money to mm -hmm. improve. So there, there has to be some uh, incentive, maybe some kind of uh, tax break mm -hmm. or maybe something that could be done with uh, incentives that can be given to either faith-based organizations mm -hmm. or nonprofits to really make mm -hmm. child care for women a lot more readily available. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of private companies now are, have a, some on-site child care, mm -hmm. but we really have to lift, make, you know, free women mm -hmm. so that they're able to to become more even more mm -hmm. active in their in their careers mm -hmm. um, because the, the woman is the first teacher of our children mm -hmm. and so if she's struggling she's having a hard time that's going to have an effect upon our children you mm -hmm. know and I don't have an answer for mm -hmm. out of wedlock births I don't have an answer for that but mm -hmm. uh, we do know that whether these children are born in wedlock or out of wedlock they spend most of their time mm -hmm. either in child care or in school. Uh, uh, Dr. Patrick let's see if you can uh, uh, give us an answer to this. Do you think that uh, it would be cost effective if uh, the government and private agencies moved into these cities and attempted to deal with some of these problems? Would that be cost effective? Yeah, I, I think that if we're willing to uh, invest you know, $80,000 a year to imprison somebody, uh, then we could 
you know, invest half of that or even mm -hmm. and, and send somebody to college for four years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was listening to... And so, of course, the, the, we're just about at the end of the show today, but I appreciate the information, and let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you, and good morning.